This is a 1974 Vauxhall FE 2300S, which I'm going to call a Victor, even though it was never badged as one by Vauxhall. And I'm going to see just why it didn't quite work for Vauxhall. Inside, there's lots of lovely blue vinyl. There's, there was blue carpet. It seems a bit dirty in this one. And lots of fake wood absolutely everywhere. But it's a nice, comfortable driving position. The steering wheel's thrust right back into your hands. And there's this four-speed gearbox. It's got this particularly baggy gate. And annoyingly, no overdrive option, which was deleted for this model year. Not a good move, Vauxhall. Straight away, it has to be said, this is a car that does feel a lot older than the mid-1970s. The world had moved on a fair bit by then, but this car feels like it's lagging behind. On the plus side, it's got this great lusty four-cylinder engine, which pulls really well. And the gear change is quite pleasant once you get used to how long the stick is and how wheels around so much even when it's in gear. Compared to the Opal Record which shared its floor pan, I've got rack and pinion steering here rather than recirculating ball. So while this was a last stub of independence of Vauxhall, the fact that it shared components with a record demonstrates that that independence was starting to web already. Unfortunately for Vauxhall, their last independent effort, the FE, wasn't very well received. It never sold in strong numbers. And I put a lot of that down to the looks. The FD before it had curvaceous hips and a really smiley front end. It was a car with a lot of character, albeit perhaps not the right character for the market it was after. Uh, those cheeky looks rather more suited the Viva. Sounds like the exhaust is catching somewhere underneath on this one, it's making a rather odd noise and also the fan heater seems permanently stuck, stuck on. But this is the biggest problem with this car, they claim to have altered the gearing to make up for the lack of overdrive but we're, we're doing 50 miles an hour and already it's starting to sound a little revvy. If I take it up to 60, It's having to work quite hard now, and at motorway speeds it's just awful, it's not very relaxing at all. I know that well because Vauxhall Heritage owned an identical car to this, and a few years back I drove it all the way from Cambridge to Devon and back. A lovely car, but it just felt unfinished really. Lots of potential, but it just wasn't quite there. Overall, I'm very sorry Vauxhall, but this car really proved why it could no longer be independent. The Carlton that replaced it was a much better car, a bit clinical perhaps, but that's the German influence. There's no denying that Vauxhall has rebadged Opals. They were actually better cars. Take the Chevette as an example. I find the Chevette is leagues ahead of the Viva HC. Outwardly similar, exactly the same engine, but the Chevette uses a torque tube to a much better rear suspension. And in almost every way, it just feels a better, more composed, more complete package. So there you have it, the Vauxhall Victor FE. A car which sadly doesn't actually deliver. It's a good car, but it's certainly not a great car.